Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to another Family Ties production of Western Sig Big Six Basketball. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders at Wharton Fieldhouse. Getting ready to bring you the action from the uh, 102nd year of meetings between the Moline Maroons and the Rock Island Rocks. Both teams come in with excellent records, coming off big wins last weekend. Rocks have an especially big win, Jim. Well, they sure did, uh, Smitty. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you play uh, Westchester St. Joseph, you play them in Chicago at Northwestern and beat the defending state champions 61 to 52 last Sunday. That was a, uh, a big win for the Rocks. And uh, the 2 0 start in the conference really helps. And of course, they're 8 0 overall. So they're the team to beat right now. And, and this is a huge game here tonight. You know, and both teams come in with 2 0 records and, and they're both preseason favorites to win the conference. So. So this is a this is an important game, although it's still early December and uh, you know there's a lot of basketball to be played yet. But this is going to set the tone for the rest of the season. Whoever wins this game's in the driver's seat. Well, and I think it's especially important for Moline to win this game on your own home court. You need to get one up if you possibly can. And you talk about the Rocks and uh, the Maroons meeting. There's the opportunity for them to meet four times this year uh, if things go just right. So this could be the first of many great ball games this season. And as you say, they have the possibility to meet four times this year. A loss is not going to kill you, and if you're going to lose one, this might be the time to do it. So, well, that's possible. And but there's bragging rights in the exactly conference right. championship on, on exactly the line. Right. Well, Moline a, comes in at six and one, having only lost to Springfield Southeast down on the Springfield court. Yep. And uh, close ball game down there. Both teams excellent rebounding teams, handle the ball well. Rock Island's going to pressure you like they always do. Well, you got to look at that. I think both teams are very, very experienced. If you look at the Moline lineup, there are a lot of juniors in that lineup, but these kids all started all last year when they were sophomores. So they have great game experience. And of course, the Rocks kind of went young a couple of years ago, and they're right. starting all seniors, but these are kids who have started. They're into their third year as in the starting lineup, several of them. So very experienced ball clubs getting ready for a nice game. You know, game. And you take your lumps when you do that, but it's paying off now. You reap the benefits down the road. Exactly right. Well, of course, it's been cleared, and we're getting ready for the opening lineups. We'll try to get you those starting lineups as they're announced for you. We're talking about their, the PA now. We're talking about the longest rivalry and maybe even the United States. 1898, how about that? You no, know, and you consider the game of basketball has only been around about since 1896 or whatever it was. Where did they nail the peach basket is where I want to know. Yeah, very boy, no kidding. Well, they're getting, we're preparing now for the national anthem, and I'll tell you, a nice crowd here tonight, Jay. Yeah. Well, there should be. A game like this, it ought to be a pretty full house. A few announcements before we oh, I can see a few empty seats here, so. Well, it'd be nice to think that, you know, we, we still keep hoping against hope that Friday nights become the night to come to high school basketball, football, anything the high schools are doing, and it'd be nice to see a packed house tonight, but um, far more people here tonight than were at the Quad City Thunder ball game, for example, last night, right. so, so that does help, but boy, Duncan Reed's done an excellent job in his tenure at Rock Island. They're, uh, what, 38 and 10 you know, in the last, since 1981 against Moline, so well, that's a, they've had the, the Maroons number, so. Well, why don't we take a quick break here and listen to the national anthem. The Moline Pep Band is going to play that, so we'll pause right now for the national anthem.
What a great job Frank Dexter has done also with the Moline Maroon program here. What a powerful program they got their sophomores tonight. My gosh, they. What was that a sophomore score? The Moline sophomores kind of ran off and hid from the from the Rock sophomores. 81 to 44. Or something oh, that was like yeah, that, that was so I know it was a big score. A big game. Well, let's see our starting lineups. Number 22, Terrence Pulliam. Four Rock Island, the Rocks. Number 22, a 6'2 senior, Terrence Pulliam. At the other guard, a six foot one. At the other senior, guard, number 31. Number 31. Donald Slaw, he's 6'1", he's a senior also. At forward, a 6'2", senior, number 23, Brandon Madison. At center, Madison. At, excuse me, at the forward, number 23, Brandon Madison. At he's 6'2", he's a senior. Senior, number 34, Brad At the Novak. other forward, number 34, Brad Novak, 6'5", senior. Six senior and at center, John number 44, he's 6'7", he's senior also, John Banks. Duncan Reed is the head coach. And now for the Moline Maroons. And now for the Moline Maroons. First at guard, a six foot one inch junior, number 22, Ryan Scannell. Number 22, a six foot one inch junior, Ryan Scannell. Played quite a bit number last year. Good player. Sophomore, number 24, Jay McAdams Thornton. Also at guard, a six foot three inch sophomore. Number 24, Jay McAdams Thornton. Number 34, Chris. At forward, a six foot three inch junior, Chris Hickey. At the other forward, a six foot two inch senior, number 40, Joe Manning. And the only senior in the starting lineup for the Maroons, six foot two inch senior, Joe Manning. He'll wear number 40. And finally at center, six foot six inch junior, number 44, Travis Hoyt. Rock Island is coached by Duncan Reed and assistant Frank Dexter, the Moline head coach. And I would be remiss if we didn't mention Ryan Dykeman, the sophomore coach, who just obviously doing a good job. He's got some talent, but the kids don't win by themselves. Well, so exactly congratulations right. to them. Officials for tonight's ball game, and you'll notice in the Western Big Six, we're still using two officials, one of the very few conferences left that have not gone to three a three-person crew. And I'll tell you what, in a game like this, that couldn't make a difference. Now, you're the old official. Is there, is there a time when they kick in the three... Uh, uh, becomes a, a rule? Well, it, they're doing it now all an all-state tournament series game, starting with the regionals all the way through our three-person crews. But uh, the Western Big Six, I believe, next year are going to go three-man. So, but Randy Holerud and Paul Mitchell are officials tonight. Paul will throw the ball up, and we're ready to go. Got, it's like uh, Banks and uh, McAdams. Thornton going up. Balls. We're going to do that again. But I tell you what, those boys <laughs> both jumped real high, and that... Paul threw it up there real high. Well, the key is they're supposed to get it on the way down, but it, you know, it's still, this is a dying art, being able to toss the ball. When you toss the ball one time a game, yeah. we're very close, I think, Coach, to flip a coin like a football. Yeah. And Moline gets a first, and Rock Island gets the next jump ball. They get ball. defer and uh, go on with it. I huh? believe that's going to happen soon. Well, yeah, Moline, Moline opens up with their zone. And the Rocks with the ball, moving the ball on the perimeter now. Trying to work that ball inside. We've got a jump, jump ball. ball. That ball's going to go to the Maroons on the alternate possession. The entry passed for Brandon Madison was tied up there, and Moline gets the possession, Coach. Chris Hickey's going to inbound to Ryan Scannell. He's going to run the point, and here comes Rock Island. They're, they put that pressure on you the whole game in varying yeah. degrees. That's exactly right. It may be real passive, real, real tentative early, and uh, they'll just clamp it down. That time they're running 1-3-1 one, one, and really picked them up at about quarter court, really. But that'll be out to half court soon and maybe three quarters before we know it. Oh, that's Steel. good defense. And a breakaway there. Number 22, Terrence Pulliam. Pass. Beautiful pass to Brandon Madison. And the Rocks break on top. Well, Rocks strike first, and the defense creates the points. Exactly, and they'll do that. I oh, talked yeah. to Coach Dexter before the game and uh, asked him a couple of things that they the keys of the game. He said, well, you got to handle the pressure, and then you got to rebound with the Rocks. And both teams, excellent rebounding teams. There's Bullet. a good entry pass there. That was a good play. Inside, outside. And go. Big rebound Pinky by Banks. with the shot. Banks leads the break. Pulliam for three. Doesn't go. Hoyt with the rebound. Ahead to McAdams. Thornton. He's one on three. Puts up a shot. Good tip up. And Joe Manning answers for the Maroons. Tied at two. He followed that one all the way. The Rocks weren't too excited about that tip, but that ball definitely was off the rim, Coach. Novak for two. Turnaround jump shot. Clean, coach. Uh, he's a force in the in the paint in there. You gotta yeah. you gotta defend him in the paint. 
And I'm there. sure Moline's going to collapse on right. him. He's averaged 14 points a ball game up to this point, so they know that, that he, when he gets the ball, there's a good chance he's going to shoot that quickly. Now, the Rock Island zone, their point man is, is, is making them extend their offense maybe a little more than they want. There's that pressure, but nice play. Hoyt. Oh, off the glass, wouldn't go. Novak with the rebound. There's the ball to Slaw. And he looks to shoot and sets it back up. Coming to the point is Terrence Pulliam. Moline, a 3-2 or 2-1-2. Looks like a 3-2 zone. And they could be matching up, Coach. I, being a, a, a former football coach, uh, these new matchup things confuse me a little bit, but that may be exactly what they're trying to do. They did that last year very well against Rock Island in one of the ball games and, and really caused great trouble. So they could be running some matchup stuff in there right now. Banks on the inside. Got to get out of that lane in a hurry and, it's, and a steal by Moline. Good anticipation by Joe Manning there. Banks got himself trapped under the bank board and they have any place to go. Ryan Scannell, two points for the Maroons. Low scoring affair here early, 4-2. Five minutes left in the first quarter. 4-4. Four, 4-4. Four. Four, four. What did I say, 4-2? I even got it in the book, 4-4. Four, four. It's okay, We're, or it's early. It's early in it's this early game in the game. early in our season. Bank stops and pops. Look at that rebound position by Novak inside. He's fouled. Beautiful job that time on the rebound by Brad Novak. Looks like Jay McAdams, Thornton's going to get whistled for the foul. He reached in, try to slap that ball out of there. Brad Novak is the leading rebounder in the Western Big Six this oh, year Jay with McAdams. nine rebounds per ball game in the conference game. So it's, it's not the just luck that he was there rebounding that ball. <laughs> Novak's going to go to the line. He's a 71% free throw shooter. And that was a nice one. soft touch there. <clears throat> Up and good. Well, it's 448 to go here in the first quarter. The Rocks break on top, 5-4. Novak on his second free throw. It's off the rim. Scramble for the ball. Moline Scannell control. runs it down. Ahead to Hickey. He moves it quickly into the quarter court. McAdams Thornton down the middle out to Scannell. Back inside, mishandled. What quick hands in there. Rocks quick come hands. in with it. It's going to go back to Moline. But quick hands by the Maroons. The uh, Rocks, I mean. Cameraman in the corner just about took one that time. <laughs> His whole right. life flashed before him <laughs> on film. Up close and personal. <laughs> Dickie McAdam Storton oh, underneath play. the Manning. Up and in. Nice work by the Maroons. Did a nice job of using that basket to protect that ball from a block. And a travel called on Novak. Look, did you drag that foot, coach? Yes, you did. I like so. the pace of the game. Both teams, I, I think, right now are showing the fact that they're experienced ball clubs. It's, you know, if you're going to get nervous, this first four or five minutes right. of this first quarter will be it. And they really aren't showing that. That, that travel wasn't caused by being nervous or, or anything like that. It's just uh, one of those things that happen. Scannell from the outside. For a three, Ryan Scannell, first points of the night. Stretches that lead to nine to five now. Slaw answers, a little long off the rim. Manning with the board. Coach Dexter emphasized the importance of rebounding against the Rocks. Like we said, both teams out rebounding their opponents by wide margins. You bet. Scannell on the wing, the, stops the and pops. Six, you bet. In and out, wouldn't go, put back. Ball's on the floor, Maroons. After it, McAdam Thornton up with the shot on the rim, hangs and goes. Jay McAdam Thornton got that, that got that good. hometown roll on that one. <laughs> that baby laid there and just finally dropped in. And Moline's doing a nice job of pressuring that the, the passing uh, of Rock Island, our first sub of the ball game. Adam Barnes, a 6'4 senior, one of the captains, Coach Barnes and Novak and Banks are captains for Rock Island. And, and Barnes has, has played a lot of minutes in his four years at. Rock Island, he's in the ball game right now, replacing Madison. He averages six points a game. And more importantly, you gotta have that sixth man coming in. You bet, oh, what a sweet shot by Novak. Brad Novak, Brad Novak. with his five points. You know, you don't see a lot of that. Five of the seven for the Rocks. around jump shot, you know, the old, in the old days at least, that was the shot you were trying to get your post people. And he does that so well. He's only 6'5", but when you fade away on a jump shot, it makes you about 6'9". Yeah. Chris Hickey with the ball out on the wing. The Rocks are, are, are kind of taking away the passing lanes also. Look at that, though. Nice movement of the ball by the Maroons. Got to have a little walk. 
He had that just a little bit of a fumble with the ball. Yeah. What a great idea, though. A great idea. I tell you what, it appears to me you don't put the ball on the floor against the Rocks because no. they're going to collapse, especially on the baseline, because they're going to be on you so quickly that you better put it up or get rid of it. You bet. You bet. Traditional Rock Island defensive basketball. Good perimeter movement. Trying to work that ball. Trying to get the ball into Novak or Barnes right now. And Banks. We got three big guys inside. Molay's doing a nice job. Lob, set play. Novak and a jump ball. And That's a jump a ball. Coming out of a break. Backdoor there. lob. Yep. And but Novak was there, but I tell you, Joe Manning kind of read that play and was there helping to defend it. So, Well, and Rock Island's kind of wanting the foul call, but really, uh, uh, Moline just went straight up in the air and there's a little contact, but I'm not so sure that Novak didn't cause most of it. But the yeah. possession arrow for the Rocks, they get the ball back again and carry. We got a carry. Point and I think, emphasis. is that a point of emphasis this year? You bet. Point of emphasis. That ball I think up and down the line, the referees are going to. At all levels, they're well, going to. We hope so. We hope so. That gives a tremendous advantage to a player if you let that kid put, come, that ball come to rest in that kid's hand, and then put it back down again. Chris Hickey draws the defense into the corner, back outside, back to Hickey. Look at that. Far yeah. side to Cascanel for three. Off the iron, wouldn't go. Yeah, Novak on the rebound. The Rocks on the run to Barnes. The slaw three from the corner in and out. But Novak is right there. Don't leave him loose. Offensive board for the Rocks, but they couldn't take advantage of it. Nope. Here comes the here comes the Maroons now. They're gonna slow it down. And we're we're kind of wa watching here to see when Rock Island picks up the defensive pressure. Oh yeah. So far they've I they mean they're playing hard, but it, they're yeah. not putting the pressure on that they can. No, right now I think they're more interested in cutting off those passing lanes that Moline's got, but Moline's got a good plan because they're getting guys open with that skip pass. Nice work. They got wow. a foul. McAdam Storton goes up for the shot, but he was he was nicked on the arm, and the foul's going to go on uh, 31, I believe. Yeah. Is that Slaw? Slaw, Donald Slaw. Number 31, Donald Slaw. At the line of Moline, J. McAdam Storton shooting two. Adam Storton comes in shooting 52% from the line. Averaging 7.8 on the season. First one's up. Two subs for Rock Island. Number 43, Ray Muscovalli coming in. He's a 5'8 sophomore. Got Justin Ward in for the Maroons, a six foot five inch junior. Joe Manning will get a little rest for the Maroons. McAdam Storton misses the second one. Good put back right in right. immediately by Ward, but he Rocks. a little too strong. Rocks are on the run. One minute, 10 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Moline leads Rock Island 11 to 7. Working the ball on the perimeter. Muscovalli with the ball. Slaw. Slaw. It's got to be, a, and I haven't seen Rocks yet this year, but boy, they're setting him up for that three point shot. So it's got to be something he's going to I think put he's in. a threat from the yep. outside. He's got a nice looking shot. He just had to go on down yet. Now he'll drive. Nice move. Up. One hander. Ten. Off the boards, wouldn't go. And Moline controls that, Coach. That's, our rocks are hitting the board hard, but Moline's holding their own. Chris Hickey, good positioning there. And, you know, Banks hit the boards hard, too, but it just wasn't enough. There's Ryan Scannell. With his nice. uh, second hoop, if I'm not mistaken. He's got a two and a three now. In, interior pass into Banks. Ball knocked, Ooh, ball's out, knocked of out of bounds. On that last play, Coach, uh, on the basket for Moline, Travis Hoyt set a beautiful pick. And Muscovale, he's trying to work himself around that thing. And I think Scannell was on the basket. Is that correct? Right, Scannell on the basket. Oh, my. He used that pick and just came around behind. Had the wide open shot. Deep out of the corner. Rebound to McAdam Storton. Pulling him on the miss that time. Well, we're under. We're at the 12-second mark here. We'll see what Scannell has in mind. Looking a little back door. Give and go with Travis Hoyt. Looking back inside. Hoyt with the ball. Puts it on the floor and loses it. Two seconds. We're Ooh. not going to get a shot off. We get a long shot. That was not going to count. Hit We're going to take a break, Smitty. At this point in time, remember this is an AT&T Cable Services. It's a Family Ties production. Jim Sanders and Jim Smith. Moline leads at the end of one, 13 to seven.
It was called the greatest generation any society has ever produced. They were ordinary people who half a century ago did nothing less than help save the world. Millions served in uniform, millions more served at home, and nearly half a million gave their lives. And yet there is no national memorial to honor their sacrifice. It is time to say thank you. Call now and help build the National World War II Memorial. For the best in high school sports, watch Channel 38. Well, we're back here at Warden Fieldhouse. This is Jim Smith along with my sidekick, Jim Sanders. Family Ties Productions here on AT&T Cable Services. Channel 38, bringing you to Western Big Six action. It's the Maroons and the Rocks locked up in the oldest rivalry in Illinois. And maybe the country. And maybe the country. We're Boy, I tell you what. That. As we speak, we're researching Oh, that. good hands Muscovalli. by Muscovalli. Oh, my. Fans want to travel, but they're not getting it. Boy, I tell you, a lot of action right off the bat here to start this second quarter. That's going to uh -oh, be over uh -oh. and back. That's going to be over and back. Now, people might argue that because Moline touched the ball in the middle, but last possession. But the Rocks, I mean, the rocks touched, touched it again. Touched it last. That's right. The then that counts, huh? That's exactly right. Well, anyway, as I was. That, that's how that works. The Rock, uh, Moline never actually possessed that ball, so. Well, the Rocks are picking up now. Looks like they're going to play a little man to man here. Yeah. Now, that's two trips and, and two potential turnovers one turnover and one almost turnover. So. Exactly right. Well, and the Rocks have had it twice. They've taken a real long, wild shot, one on four, and turned it over. So now here comes some trapping now. Yeah. They're going to trap here in the corner. That's over to Scannell. Gets it ahead to Manning inside. Yep. We're going to get a foul. A little too much body there by uh, that Banks or Novak That's on that Novak, foul. Novak, I think, Coach. Let's see what uh, 34. 34, yeah. That's Brad's first. First. Relatively clean game for the kind of pressure that both teams are putting well, we on. Got, what do we got? One, two, three fouls. Three fouls total. That's not bad. We got a great spot Point up in here. the paint. Fakes up. Soft one-hander. Misses it. A little too strong. Now, yeah. well, now we're going to get Hoyt on a little push as uh, as uh, Banks was coming out with the ball. Yeah. Well, it's going to be. Yeah, that's official's tough call because there wasn't a whole lot of contact, but it did make Banks travel. Yes. And so. Jay McAdams Thornton coming back in, and Travis Hoyt's going to sit down, and take a little rest here. Well, right now, we got number the, 50 is still in there, Justin yep, Ward yep. from Maroons. Moline's used six players. Rock Island's used seven at this point in time. So both teams going pretty much with a with a strong uh, early lineup here, and going with uh, what they consider their best group right now. You're going to dance with who brung them, huh? That's right. You bet. Well, let's see if the Rocks have solved their zone. Going to get a kick on uh, Manning there. Good reactions. Wonderful job. Number 11, Island, number 11 coming Mike in for Rock, Rock Island, Mike Brozovich. He's a 5'8 sophomore, so uh, he'll come back in, and, and Pulliam is going to sit down. Madison checking back in. Won't be in until the next Long dead skip ball. pass. There's Slaw. Nice ball fake. Puts yeah. it up. Well, nice soft shooter, touch. Coach. Yeah. There's no question about that. He's averaging 10 points a ball game, so, so he was going to get untracked eventually. Scannell with the ball gets oh, it through. Nice steal. Good Novak. anticipation by Novak. Off the rim, no good. Quick hustle. Banks is up with it. Spin move. No good. Novak on the rebound. Up and scores. Brad Novak. Tough rebound. Now the Rocks putting more pressure on, Coach. Well, they've cut the lead now to two, 13 to 11. They get him starting dribbles through the press. He better, not, to dribble. he better not dribble too many more one, times. One too many dribbles. Scannell's going to come Dang up it. with it. Rock Island's all over the place now, Coach. We were wondering when they were going to turn up the pressure. Well, it we happened here. Know. Second quarter, know. folks. And he walks. And you can credit that travel to little number Mike, number 11, Mike Brozovich. Did a nice job. Come in and anticipated that pivot and was right there. And Scannell didn't have any choice but to travel. Well, Madison comes back in the ball game for the Rocks trying to check out who else came back in. Pulliam's back, or excuse me, trying to check who came back in. Barnes, I think, came back in that time. So uh, Banks is going to sit down. Pulliam sitting down. Slaw is sitting down. And a, a Aaron steal Pass by there. the Maroons. Chris Hickey with a jam. 
Well, badly needed points. Rock Island. Badly needed points by the Maroons. Rock Island calls a 20-second timeout. We'll take a quick break here. We'll be right back. Our score, 15-11, for five minutes, 34 seconds to go, second quarter. Well, we're back after that quick 20-second timeout. We Both didn't hardly get a chance just to even sit back and relax there, did we? I took just a little nap. Well, how do you feel now? Here's a power nap. <laughs> the Rocks with the ball, number 43. That's Ray Muscovalli coming down the court with the ball. Two sophomores at guards right now for the Rocks. Brozovich with the ball. He's going to take that three. You let him shoot it, he's going to make it. Three points, 15-14. Going to say Moline Steel, Denham, Steel Muscovalli. Muscovalli. Woo! To Novak. And Novak Rocks. had an idea. He said, yep. nah, better not. Rocks are going to set up. He thought better of it. He's under <laughs> getting in rebound in case somebody else misses. But oh boy, the Maroons are taking away passing lanes right now, Coach, doing an excellent job. Not much inside play right now with Banks on the bench and Novak playing on the oh, way. Oh, great anticipation by McAdams starting. And we got a block. Muscovalli stepped in. That's a close call, but I think that's probably a pretty good call. I think it's a real good call. Real oh, good call. Three, but I'll tell you what, Muscovelli and uh, Brozovich in there at the guards, the quickness factor just went up a whole bunch. And they're pressuring now. They're picking up man to man. They're going to deny the inbounds pass. Oh, my. Almost a five second call yeah. there. Scannell dribble against Muscovelli. Throws it away, back to the Rocks. I haven't been keeping track, Coach, but I'll guarantee you that since uh, Rock Island has gone to more pressure, there's been very, very few times that, that Moline has actually shot the ball. Comes Travis Hoyt back in the game. Scannell's going to get a little rest. Banks is back in the ball game. Barnes is going to sit down. <coughs> Mike Reed, Duncan's yep. son, is down there directing some... You bet. Uh, Muscovalli is going to come out. What a spark he was in that uh, second quarter action here. And the Rocks. That's Rocks soft. outscoring uh, the Maroons 7 to 2 so far wow. this quarter. Yep. Chance to go ahead on this possession if they can get a good shot. Brozovich, we got a foul coming. We got a foul coming here. An unpopular call. It's going to go against Travis Hoyt. That's his second foul, and I tell you what, that's 6-6 six, six against 5-8. Yeah. He surprised you sometime, but that ball got blocked. Now, whether he got part of the arm as he came following through or not, we don't know. But no matter what, Brozovich is going to shoot two. First one up, no good. Chance to tie it here. 15-14, Maroons hang clinging yeah. to that one-point lead. Halfway through the second quarter. And pretty fortunate, really, for a few of, of, of looks that they've had offensively and actually good shots that they got at this end down here. But they're back again and still have the lead. Hickey down inside. Of Manning underneath puts it up a little strong. What Justin position? Ward comes in over <laughs> Brad Novak's back. I'm sure he's going to pick up that foul. Yeah. What a great job of position that Brad Novak did that time. That's Subs Ward's again. first. Slaw back in. Spinell uh, back in for Hoyt for the Maroons. Coming out. Not bad. Not bad game, Coach. I'll tell you what, for our, for our first trip back here in 1999, uh, couldn't have picked a better ball game. 15-14, four minutes left in first half. Maroons ahead. Moline has done a beautiful job of shutting off any interior offense for the Rocks. Novak in and out, and a foul over the back there, and I like that in officiating. Well, We've had two over the backs in two trips, and they've both been called. And that's excellent uh, positioning by Chris Hickey there. Brandon Madison picks up his first foul, and the Rocks are going to pick up full court now. And I, and I can't recall the last time the Maroons had a good look at the basket. Last time down, they had one underneath, yep. but it was challenged pretty hard. Oh, my. Brad Novak, good play. Novak. And we got a bump here. Well, I'll tell you what, what great anticipation that time. But on the other hand, the days of the look one way and pass the other way and actually fooling anybody are just about over. Yeah. 
I mean, that pass has worked for several years, and each year it's, it's less and less effective, you know. And, and I think now we're just going to have to go down the court. Don't look at anybody and dish the ball off to somebody. Yeah. You know, but right, that look, look them away stuff just isn't working right now. Throw it to the guy that's open. As soon as he looked to the right, Novak broke the other way. Novak inside. Oh, what great shot. Good put back. Actually, they got a break there. The Rocks got a break there. The shot by Slaw was a little strong. Yeah. And Novak on the backside got the weak side rebound. And we got the pressure causes another turnover. And the Rocks have taken the lead 16 to 15. And now have a chance to extend it. Well, and Coach Dexter, I mean, he's, he's just hoping against hope now with 321 to go. And the kids can weather the storm a little bit. He'd hate to use another timeout if he didn't have to. But but still, uh, they're really out of out of sync right now. No question about it. Well, they're they're setting some back picks. Slaw's running the baseline. They're trying to get him open for threes. And no defense open underneath. But I'll tell you, Rock Island. The only thing that's saving him right now, rebounding, which you talked about early, and they are playing great defense. Look at that rebound. Novak up, pushed. Good. Got a little hip. Here sprained his ankle though, Coach. I think. Oh, is that Novak with the, yeah, that's is. Novak I limping think he here. He sprained his ankle when he, when he landed. That's Jay McAdams Thornton picking up his third foul now. Well, that's bad news for both teams there, Coach. Bad news for both teams. Novak trying to shake it off. <laughs> Novak going to the line. He's shooting 71% from the line this year. Well, we can only hope his ankle just a little one of those, and maybe it's a chronic thing that he's had. Roll it, and it's, you know, you do that a few times and it doesn't hurt, you know, as long or quite as bad. Eric Boster's coming in. He's going to get Jay McAdams Thornton. I'm sure we won't see him again this half. No. Three fouls. Coach Dexter's going to sit McAdams Thornton. To, and he's got a ticky tacky one and, and then not, maybe not a real smart one down there. Right, right. With the hip. Novak had great position, and you don't get away with that. Boy, missed both free throws, though. And the Rock still with great pressure. Got a little reach in there. Got a little too much of the arm. Yep. He was going for the strip, but he got a little too much of the arm. That's number 22. Terrence Pulliam on the foul Pulliam. that time. He's going to pick up his first. Only five team fouls now yep. for, for the Rocks. Pressure as the Rocks have put on, they're doing a real good job of playing defense with their feet. And not reaching in and breaking for the, the for the passes and the loose balls, he'll get another one here if they're not careful. Yeah, nice job. Maroons break the pressure; they get it in the forecourt, but Rocks have extended their defense <laughs> out. The problem with, with with going against Rock Island, if you break the press and then you come bring it back out to set it up, heck, they're right back on you again. You, you know, know and if, you know, and they're challenging every pass. Every pass. There's no there's no gimmies anymore here. I was going to say years ago when Don DeLue and I refereed our last year, we had Rock Island and Quincy. Both teams played in the state tournament that year, had the last conference game. And I'll tell you, every time the ball went down to the floor, there was question whether it was ever going to come back up or not. Yeah. And I'll tell you, that was one of the hardest games we've ever had to officiate. Ryan Scannell, nice Ooh. move, nice shot. <laughs> Wouldn't go. Novak, Muscovalli, Slaw with the Walk. ball, penetrates. Now the Rock's going to try to take it to the hoop a little bit, around and in. Beautiful shot by Terrence Pulliam. 18-15 in favor of the Rocks with 2.05 to go here. Here's Boster trying to break the pressure, gets it ahead to Manning. He's got a challenge, goes up against Novak, and lays it in. That's the only the second bucket by the Maroons the entire quarter. Very smart play that time by Novak. They had they had the basket. Oh, Banks on the turnaround hook. Little jump hook there for Banks. But Novak could have picked up a cheap foul there, but the experience of a senior, he knew he had him beat, so he let him go. That's Banks' first points yeah. tonight. And Banks is averaging uh, 12.3 per game. Oh, nice movement by the Maroons. They broke the pressure that time. Yep. Joe Manning to Justin Ward under the hoop. 19-20. Yep. Rocks with the lead. Whoa, and a turnover. And a turnover. Woo. Well, the momentum goes back the other way. In for Rock Island, Lorenzo Walker, number 20. He's a junior, a six-footer. And Slaw will sit down. Rock's major pressure now on the inbounds. Maroon's working hard. Man, every pass, Coach, there's a wonder whether it's going to get there or not. 2019, one minute, 18 Here's seconds Hickey. to go in the first half. He beats the pressure. He picks it. Steal. Good hands. Pull him. Left-handed jump shot. Probably shot down with Big a little. Big rebound early. by Hickey. Well, the Maroons dodged the bullet there. He sure did. Hickey quickly into the forecourt. Over to Scannell. 
If they let him put his hands on like that, that's got to be a foul. Yeah, that's got to be a foul. Yeah. No way around it. And he called it. That's number 20, Lawrence, Lorenzo Walker, going to pick that foul up. Now both teams going to be in the bonus now after this next foul. Less than a minute yep. to go and a half, so may not see too many free throws here this half. For the defensive intensity, there hadn't been that many fouls. It really hasn't. Well, you, you said it earlier. Yep. They're playing defense with their feet. Moving the feet. Doing a nice job. And the officials are calling a good game. I mean, it's, if they're not letting them get away with a lot of contact, a little contact. Dumps it down to Manning. He walks. He's going to get caught walking. He kind of got his feet tied yeah, up there on somebody's foot and then couldn't get his yeah. step taken. Well, and that's a hard call, too, because if the defensive man is just standing there and that guy falls and he's got good position, he falls over your foot. You didn't, you didn't foul him. No. You didn't foul him. And I don't think he got pushed by anybody. So 35 seconds. Well, let's see. It looks like the Rock's going to take yeah. the air out of it maybe a little bit here. Well, they lead 20, 19, 30 seconds to go. Do a little four corners thing here. On the point, they've got Terrence Pulliam. To his right is number 20, Lorenzo Walker. And to his left is the sophomore, Ray Muscovelli. Novak and Banks <laughs> in the corners. 12 seconds. Now they're going to run a little offense here. Muscovelli here go. to Banks. Drives. Burns Five with seconds. the pressure. Quick pass, beautiful. Two-pointer on its way. Won't go and we're at halftime. Well, the Rocks are going to go into the locker room with a 20 to 19 lead. It was all the Rocks the second quarter, outscoring the Maroons 6, uh, 13 to 6. It was all Maroons had it their way the first quarter. Rocks come out second quarter, turn the pressure up, turn the ball game around in their favor. Well, with the teams leaving the floor and the Rocks leading 20 to 19, we'll take a break here at halftime and be bringing you second half action. Again, this is Family Ties Production, AT&T Cable Services. And we'll be right back with second half action. It was called the greatest generation any society has ever produced. They were ordinary people who half a century ago did nothing less than help save the world. Millions served in uniform, millions more served at home, and nearly half a million gave their lives. And yet there is no national memorial to honor their sacrifice. It is time to say thank you. Call now and help build the National World War II Memorial. For the best in high school sports, watch Channel 38. Back here at Wharton Fieldhouse after the halftime break. Uh, once again, this is Jim Smith along with my sidekick, Jim Sanders, Jess Medine on the camera, and our producer, as always, doing a great job. And we're ready for the second half of this oldest rivalry in basketball in Illinois, and as you say, Jim, maybe in the nation. You know, Rocks lead it 20 to 19. Well, and we don't talk about early in the season. The Rocks, for example, been averaging almost 70 points a ball game through their first eight, and tonight they've got 20 at halftime. Moline's averaging about 65 a game. They've got 19. So both teams playing great defense, and we'll see what happens here in the second half. Steal. Boy, Chris Hickey, great anticipation. This is off to Justin Ward, lays it up and in. And Moline strikes first. The Rocks come back and start their starting lineup again. Pulliam, Slaw, Banks, Novak, and Madison. And for the Maroons, we got Hoyt, Manning, Scannell, Hickey, Justin Ward in there. Came in Whoa, in the second half. Play. Good putback. Is that Brad Novak again? Yes, it is, Coach. I watched Brad from the time that shot went up. And, I mean, he did not have that inside position when that shot went up. But by the time that ball came off the board, Inside position, a power move to the basket, and a potential of a three-point play. You know, Brad's got 12 or uh, nine points on the night, and uh, we were looking at halftime here at some of the scoring averages, and 
He's the only one that's even close. That's right. And, he, and, and he's a real good free throw shooter and has had all kinds of trouble so far tonight. Hey, he's, a, he's a one for four from the one for five from the line. Shot up by the Maroons. Ball's loose. Goes out of bounds off Banks. He and Justin Ward battling underneath there. A couple things to point out what you just mentioned to go a minute ago about defense and high scores. Banks has got two points right now and he's averaging almost 13 a game. Brad, Brandon Madison scored, I think, the first basket of the game, averaging about 15 a game, and he has two. So, boy, long inbounds pass. <laughs> Those are scary. Well, let's see if the if the Maroons have made the infamous adjustments at <laughs> halftime <laughs> to, to counteract one. the Rock Island defense. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast here that Coach Dexter said that two things they had to do in this game was handle Rock Island's pressure and rebound with the Rocks. Rebounding, they're holding their own. The pressure took its toll in the second quarter as it was all Rock Island outscoring Moline 13 to six in that second quarter. We'll get a foul on Small They're, that time. And we remember, we'll kind of make a note of that when the young kids come back in again, the two sophomores, Mike Brozovich, when he came in the ball game and Ray uh, Muscovalli, when they came in, that's when they went to the full court pressure right. and doubled up on people and really applied early and in the first And picked quarter. up the intensity immensely. You bet. You bet. And, and there were several trips. Moline never really had a good look at the basket. No, they didn't. Well, here's Scannell at the line shooting a pair. He makes the first one. 22-22. We're all knotted up here. Just underway in the second half. Again, the Rocks trailing 13-6 in the first quarter. Came back to take a one-point lead at halftime as Scannell puts the Maroons up by one. Uh, coaches, I be remiss if I didn't say it. it's, it's fun to be back on the air again doing these things. Uh, oh yeah. We, we missed most all of last year and uh, we you know we enjoy bringing you these broadcasts and again if you, if you enjoy what you see make sure that you uh, make some contacts uh, through AT&T Cable Services and Jess Medina at Family Ties Productions and uh, let them know. Let, them, let us know what you want. That was Hoyt with the board. Rocks with the pressure maybe a little too much pressure. Like that's going to go against Pulliam. Is that 22? 22, yeah. Yeah, I believe Pulliam. it is. That's his second. Two oh, team fouls now for the Rocks. Pulliam, well, you know, when you look at uh, both teams are going with, you know, not a lot of subs. The Rocks used, uh, I think, three subs that first half, maybe four when they went to Walker late late in that first half. And Moline uh, didn't go quite that deep, although they went. Maroons uh, has uh, played seven players yeah. with uh, Boster coming in sparingly. Little give and go. Travis Ward up, makes the hoop. What a play. Oh, Joe Manning to Tra Justin Ward. All kinds of pressure. He goes under the basket, reverse layup. John Banks is going to pick up that foul. That's his first, but what a nice hoop by Justin Ward. That was a darn Strong good to the basket. Oh, unbelievably nice look. Just the way they drew it up. Missed free throws again. And he misses his free throw. Six points for young Justin Ward on the night, he's coming off a, the bench. He's made a big difference, and he played well in that second quarter, and uh, Coach Dexter stayed with him here to start. The, he the, has, uh, I think since he's entered the game, he's been in. Yeah, I don't I think, think he's, so I, don't I don't think he's, he's come back out again. Well, Coach Dexter said he had a few boys under the weather, so that might be taking his toll. Could be. So you never know, sometimes kids play really pretty well when they're sick, and other times there's nothing in the tank. Brandon Madison that time on that little running uh, jump shot. It's like Justin Ward with the board there. Here's Scannell working against Slaw. Rock's going man to man now. Since they've gone man to man, it's it's been tough going for the Maroons. You bet. Scannell on the dribble. But the pressure is not so much that they can't run some offense right now. Right. They are doing that. Nicky give and go to Manning. Real nice play. Joe Manning. <laughs> Manning gets the hoop, but Chris Hickey, nice look. Beautiful. Two little backdoor things. Got guys open against that pressure man to man. Nice lead now, 27 22. We got four minutes, 58 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Moline leads by five. Slaw for three and count it. Well, that's a good answer. Donald Slaw for three, 27 25. Five points for Slaw now. He's averaging nine and a half on the season. Ooh, a little walk. Yeah, a little too much. And you know what I love, the thing I love most about players, Coach, is they all are good officials real early in their career. He knew he had that one pivot foot down. Yeah. It was the fact that he moved, had moved both of them a couple times before he got that one down. You know. That might have created the problem. Something else I just noticed, you always have to look at your feet. It's like when you make an area, you look at your gloves. <laughs> yeah. You travel, you look down at your feet. What are you doing? 
I always tell the kids, it's not the glove's fault. Don't, no. don't go throwing the glove anywhere. <laughs> oh, that three could have really helped that time. One shot Holy for the Rocks. Just not, not getting that ball down right now. He's averaging six points a ball game. Well, again, you know, they haven't turned the pressure up like they no. did we'll in the second quarter. And they and they generate a lot of offense oh, look out. off their defense. Two on one now. Banks fouls it himself and gets fouled. That's not a bad play, Coach. I think he shot that ball to be rebounded. Muscovalli came in the ball game there when I was, uh, you and I were talking about gloves and feet and things like that. He came in for Madison, so. Here comes Nick Zeitler in 6'4", Junior. He's going to get uh, Travis Hoyt. Yep. Give him a little rest, Hoyt, with two fouls. No points for Travis. He's a Banks with the ball at the free throw line. Muscovalli inside the three-point line. That's short. No, oh, a little. Oh, he's on the line. Coach Dexter wants the fact that he might have got bumped out there. Maybe a little pressure. Yeah. Hard to tell. He was leaning. But it was great hustle. It was great hustle. You know, and he had a notion not to grab the ball. I know it. it. Slaw with the ball in the corner. Stops and pops. Looks good. Nice move. Trap. We've got a. What do we got? to talk to a couple players here now. We're. Good officiating. Probably had some guys with a few words under the basket there. and Talking and, a little bit, banging yeah. a little too much, whatever. Yeah. Huh? Clean it up right now. 27 all, Coach, with 3.51 to go here in the third quarter. This one for the lead in the Western Big Six. And they'll carry that lead right on into the year 2000. Ball's put up. That's going to go to the Rocks. Hickey with the shot. It comes up a little short and it goes off of Maroon out of bounds and the Rocks will have it. Score tied, 344, 27 apiece. We'll watch this again, but as soon as Mescavalli came in the game for the Rocks, they the, the tempo defensively, Slaw for three, in and out. Nice rebound. Everybody from Moline had inside position that time, Coach. Scannell going to drive. Nope, pulls it up. Manning down to Ward. Gives it to Zeitler. He's hammered. On the floor. They're so going to call it on the floor. Not going to give him the shot there, huh? I think so, too. No, no shot. No shot. It's going to be on Slaw. There's a couple rocks there. We wait for the official. That's his third. Walker, I believe, is going to come off the bench. He's not going to get in until we get the next dead ball. But uh, Justin Ward trapped in the corner now, looking for help. Nice play. There's Muscovalli. Must have been standing on the line. Good hustle as Walker checks in for the rocks. And he'll probably replace Slaw, who's picked up his third foul. Yeah, he's and getting he Slaw. Slaw's got three fouls. Lorenzo Walker, again, as we mentioned before, the six foot junior, he's number 20, replaces Slaw. 3.20 to go, tie ball game. Manning back to Hickey. Man. Hickey dribbles out of the corner. Watch out behind you, Ryan. <laughs> he gets it to oh, Zeidler. Pressure now. Back to Scannell, pulls the dribble. Wide open there. Wide open. Zeidler's looking for somebody. I don't think Coach Dexter wants him dribbling. No, he Justin Ward travels. And I'll tell you what. Doesn't like it, but that's a travel. teams have done. I, I mean, I, I can't stress enough how good a job we're doing on scouting reports with these Western Big Six teams. They've identified which kids shoot well for each team, which shots are the ones they want, and the good shooters are not getting the shots where they want to shoot them right now. And uh, that's just good coaching and good execution. Well, there's the a good, pretty good trap by Molina, there, but yes, Banks comes is. out. There's a, looks like a little shuffle there. Uh, That was a step and a pivot, another step. I don't think he can do that. I don't think he can. He covered a lot of ground and didn't dribble. I'll tell you what, yeah. maybe at the next level or skip a level, that's a pretty good yeah. move. Yeah, and, or out on the playground, <laughs> oh, works every good. time. It's always good there. Pressure again by the Rocks. Pulliam, Muscovalli. Hickey going to dribble through the, all the pressure. You can't do that. And he almost made it. Banks with the ball. Somebody's going to set their offense up here and get the lead. 27 all, 2.26 to go. Muscovalli, in entry pass, intercepted. Scannell, nice hands. We've got three on two. Nice lead. Hickey gets hammered. Probably a pretty good foul by uh, Pulliam. Pulliam there. Terrence Pulliam on that foul. That's his third. Foul One, two, three, four, five, five team fouls yeah. now in the third quarter for the Rocks. So, you know, we say it all the time, but free throws could be a factor going right. down the stretch. Especially if they make a few. You know, and the Rocks over the, and the uh, Maroons only have one. 
team foul here in the second half. So we'll have uh, Hickey going to the line here. He'll shoot a pair. Chris has got two points on the night, and he's averaging 14, yep. so the Rocks have done a good job on him. Yep. And he's had some good looks, and they haven't gone. Right, exactly. And they're patient. The good players are patient. You'll see this happen quite often. You'll see some of your best scorers that will maybe have four, five, six points through three quarters and get 10 or 12 in the fourth quarter. So that'll happen. Number 23 checks in Brandon Madison. Coming out will be number 22, Terrence Pulliam. Going to take his three fouls and go to the bench. Yeah. Hickey with his second. Up and good. There's that tiebreaker. 218 to go, 28, 27. Moline, the Maroons lead. The battle of the unbeatens in the Western Big Six here. I just like the way Musk Valley plays. I mean, he's controlling that team for a sophomore. Everybody's relying on him. Madison, spin move, shot. Three-pointer out there by number 20. That's Lorenzo Walker, the junior. Makes That's it his first hoop of the night. Yep, 30-28. Muscovelli gambles. Scannell from the free throw line. Soft shot up. Manning, Manning tipped it to himself. Back exactly up. Right. Joe Manning. Ten points for Manning now. Once again, we're knotted up here. 30-30, to 30, 130 to go. Madison for three. Banks on a big rebound and scores. John Banks, a 6'7 senior on a put-back basket, and that gives the Rocks a 32-30 lead. McAdams starting back in the lineup for the Maroons. Scannell on the drive. He's going to have a little, little hand check yeah. there. I think Muska Valley got a little too much of him there. Held him on the way by. And again, maybe not a real bad foul because there's going to be a layup. They cleared out real well. And right. had a, a straight shot to the basket. Right down to six, uh, I must have missed Connor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next one puts Moline in the bonus. Hickey going to trigger the inbounds. <laughs> Having a hard time finding I anybody. The interior play on the inbounds play. There are some blocks there that. Adam Storton, free ride to the basket. Oh. Nice dish off. Zeitler can't handle it. Yep. Out of bounds to the Rocks. And that's one of those, Coach, probably a great pass, not a real good catch, but it's one of those if he continues on and shoots the layup, he's going to get fouled. Yeah. He maybe make a basket, but he's bound to get fouled. The guy's already leaning on him a little bit. Don't, don't overpass the ball. One minute to go. Third quarter action. 32-30 Rock Island. Muscovelli inside. Madison. Nice move. Madison. Madison picks up two more points. Four points for Madison. And a four-point lead for the Rocks. McAdams still oh. gets the ball ahead to Hickey. Over to Zeitler. Soft shot from the sideline. There's Manning again. Out of bounds. Going to go to the Maroons. Manning's doing a wonderful job, Coach, of rebounding. Joe good Manning's position. a veteran. You know, he's played. This is his third year on the varsity. I remember him yeah. from a couple years ago when he was a sophomore. When we doing our lineup before the game tonight, I'm going, has he played here six, seven years? Seems yeah. like ever since we've been doing ball games, yeah. he's been in there and doing a great job. You know, Saw comes back in for Rock Island. Muscovale is going to sit down. Interesting move with three fouls on Slaw. 34-30 now. Yep. Rocks with the lead with 30, just under 35 seconds. Scannell outside. Doesn't want to get trapped. There's Zeitler looking to dish off. Manning from the wing. Counted. 22 seconds to go. 34-32. Rock Island looking for the last shot. They had the last shot of the first half and didn't manage to get anything really good. We'll see what happens here. They waited until there was 12 seconds before they began. We're down to 10 seconds now. Walker better get moving here. Madison, stop, pop, looks good. In and out. Boy, that was down Woo. two seconds. Long he going to count. Oh. Off the glass. <laughs> well, we're at the end of the third quarter right now. Here from the Horton Field House. The Moline Maroons trail the Rock Island Rocks 34-32. Jim Sanders with Jim Smith, AT&T Cable Services. Again, it's a Family Ties production. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in just a minute.
It was called the greatest generation any society has ever produced. They were ordinary people who half a century ago did nothing less than help save the world. Millions served in uniform, millions more served at home, and nearly half a million gave their lives. And yet there is no national memorial to honor their sacrifice. It is time to say thank you. Call now and help build the National World War II Memorial. Yeah, here we are back at Wharton Field House. Beginning of fourth quarter action, Moline's going to have the ball. Rocks are going to pressure. This is Jim Smith along with Jim Sanders with another Family Ties production. <laughs> Harlem Globetrotters <laughs> will be here in January. This is, reminded me of that. A little break in action. And we'd be remiss if we didn't give a special thank you to Athletic Director Mike Owens and Mike Tresniak, the Wharton Field House manager for all our hospitality and helping us out here. Nice look down inside Manning. Oh, oh man. wouldn't go. Gets his own rebound, puts it up, wouldn't go. That ball might have been blocked a little bit by Banks, and Banks leads the break. Madison, spin move, a beauty. Oh, my. Brandon Madison that time on a nice move gives the Rocks a 36 30. And that time on a nice move gives the Rocks a 36-32 lead and big pressure. In. Gonna call double dribble against Moline, and Moline needs a timeout real bad. Well, here we go. It's a 20. It's a, the pressure. Yeah. The pressure is starting to take its toll. It looks like the Rocks are gonna go second quarter, fourth quarter, turn it up. Yep. Create offense off the defense. You better believe. And it. Coach Dexter right now said, "Hey boys, let's get her settled down here well, and, and, and handle the pressure." They, we've talked about it all week. Yeah. Now let's do what we're talked yeah. about. And when they have executed and not tried to dribble through three or four guys, they've done a real nice job of getting some good looks. But it's that 20 dribble move all the way down the court, trying to go through three or four rocks. Right. One of those guys is going to get the ball. And it's usually somebody trailing. That's right. Somebody's running you down from the back. That's exactly right. And they did that with quickness with uh, both uh, Brozovich and Muscovelli on the bench right now. So, so why don't they you were able to force a couple turnovers real quick here with their starting lineup. Well, their starting lineup's not there. Walker's in there. There's a kick. Pulliam's sitting down, and Walker, Lorenzo Walker, number 20, is in there along with the rest of the starting well, lineup. I was going to say the Maroons have their starting lineup in there. Scannell, Hickey, McAdams, Thornton, Manning, and uh, Hoyt. So they're gonna they're gonna take it on home with the starters here. Walker's gonna run the point for uh, the Rocks right now. Skip pass Slaw. Donald Slaw, six foot one senior, averaging about ten points a ball game, hits a three. That's his second three of the night. Well, we he, talked early in the game about he he looks like he wants to shoot that, and it looks like Coach Reed is not disappointed when he does shoot it either. So you know, and uh, early in the game the. Trying to solve Moline's zone, they were running him on the baseline and setting some picks down low. And looks like they were trying to shake That's him right. loose from the right. from the arc. So yep. we're not surprised he's knocking those down. He's no. got two threes and ten points on the night. Here's Hickey from three, a little strong. 39-32, a seven-point lead right now by Rock Island, and they've got the ball as Lorenzo Walker brings the ball across and sets up the offense against that Moline zone. Well, every possession gets to be real big at this stage of the ball game, and. That's a good kick out. Walker for three. Strong. Tip. And who comes up with it? Brad Novak. Good hustle. Great hustle. And, and Coach Reed wants a 20-second timeout as Muscovalli will come in the ball game right now for Rock Island. Do you think Coach Reed's going to talk about, well, we don't need those three-pointers now. Let's work <laughs> it down a little closer. And well, Novak hasn't touched the ball much lately. Novak I mean, with nine points in the first half has one second half basket. Right. So, and he and, and the offense right they're running right now is not going to get him many shots. If he's going to get it, he's got to get an offensive board. And we know from watching, well, he, he got one there an offensive right. board a minute ago, but it was a long rebound off the three pointer, which you see most of the time. So he's not going to get that easy putback that he had in the first half. Right. So here we go. Rock's going to inbound. Walker is out. Muscovalli is in for the Rocks, and he'll run the point with a seven-point lead, 6.18 to go. Uh, Novak's kind of open there in the middle, but uh, they didn't see him. That's a good call. I mean, there was 
You might think there's a foul there. There might have been, but it didn't harm anything. Didn't knock him out of bounds. Nope. Didn't knock him out of bounds. Didn't cause any problems. Didn't mess up their offense. Going to extend the defense. Going to say Rocks, Maroons have pushed yeah. them out a little bit here. And the Rocks are, are bringing it out a little bit too. So, you know, Coach Reed with five minutes and 51 seconds to go says maybe we'll bring you out of that zone. Maybe you're going to have to come out here and play us a little more uh, half court. And that may be why Muscovy is in the game, along with his great defensive skills, of course. Showing some patience. I think I do exactly right, Coach. That 20-second timeout. There's the look they've been. Oh. Great defense. That's that good. That's what they've been looking for. That's though. a good backside defense, though. Uh, McAdams Thornton dropping down like he's supposed to on that zone. Scanella in the dribble. McAdams Thornton down inside the Manning. He's going to look to dish back, Ooh. back outside. McAdams Thornton up and scores. Needed Badly Allen. needed Moline basket. 39-34, 5:15 to go in the fourth quarter. Western Big Six basketball. The two undefeated teams left in the league here. The winner will be 3-0 going into the new year. The team that doesn't win, there's a backdoor play for you. Nicely done. Nicely done. Brandon Madison that time. The Eight team that points for Madison. Win is still going to be in great shape in, in, as far as the conference race is concerned. Heading into the shootout for both teams tomorrow. And then uh, both teams, both the Moline and the Rocks, are going to go to Pekin for the Christmas holiday tournament where they were seated one and two. Hickey, tough move oh, inside. Nice move. Quick jump off the floor. Real quick. Count that basket. Foul's going to go on number 24. Which is, I'll find it here. 23, Madison, excuse me. Call that on. Madison. Yep. Got Justin Ward back in the lineup as Travis Hoyt goes to the bench. Hickey's going to go to the line. Hickey got three points on the night. He's averaging 14. Short. A little short. Yeah. Tip up. Manning, but no good. Banks comes down Banks with it. Banks come down with it. You know, Banks done a nice job a few times tonight, not only rebounding, but kind of leading the break as they've, they've come down the floor, setting the ball up. Muscovy Valley, Slaw with the ball. Good penetration. Now it's oh. just slipped. That's yeah, foot just slipped. Well, can't, that's a, about that. can't, have, can't help that. Yep. Just bad luck. Boy, he planted, he was set, looking to dish the ball off. Nobody was there, so he's going to try to dump it back out. Pulliam coming back in the line. Nice, uh, Schlaw's done that several times tonight, yeah. taking it in there, looking nice to dish, job. kick it back out. Terrence Pulliam, the 6'2 senior, there's comes the, in the lineup. Here's the pressure. Walker. Hickey over to Ward, back to Hickey. Rocks man-to-man -man pressure. Oh, Muscovelli. Look at this. Great hustle. McAdam sorting great hustle. Scannell for three. Got it. Big hoop, Ryan Scannell. Got a two-point ball game, Coach. 41-39. Four Moser. minutes to go. Four minutes. Western Big Six basketball. Rock threatened to run off and hide there when they were up by seven. They sure did. Foul. Look at Novak. Oh, oh. nearly. That was a great move because he got fouled early. He just hung in the air a little bit and almost dropped that thing. What a battle. What a battle. Second, 41-39, Novak at the free throw line. Averaging almost 14 points a ball game. Shooting two, but it's not been real successful so far at the free throw line. Two, four, five. I'll very guarantee he's gonna bury these two. But then what do I know? I don't know what that characteristic really for, is. Uh, really is. That ball had great rotation, but it was it was wide right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's, a, that's a football term almost. Isn't it? Wide right. Man, same ball. Hit same place. Oh, great offensive board, but it won't go. Now the Rocks triple teaming under the basket and a foul. Novak's going to pick that foul up. Well, that's probably a pretty good call in there. Manning was doing his best to clear out yep. without being swinging right. his elbows. Well, that's the one, you know, as a coach, and I'm sure Duncan was, was excited about how well the kids were putting pressure on, but he didn't, they didn't have to go to any more pressure. I believe that foul was on Novak, was it not? Yeah, it was, Coach. Well, that's going to put Manning on the line. He's got six second-half points. Moline's in the bonus now, and they will shoot one and one. 
Now, I'll tell you what. They trail by two. 3.42 to go. This is going down to the wire. You can just tell. He'll get his bonus. Manning to tie now. Maroons staging a nice comeback here. Well, they were down by seven. Little short, big board. We got a jump ball. It's going to go to the rocks. That was a nice rebound. Both guys went up. Both guys up there, Real straight good. up, straight down. Real good sportsmanship, too, I think. As yeah, as helping as each other up, patting each other in the back. You I like bet. to see that. Very competitive. We had one little thing early. The official stopped it, talked to both kids. No problem since then. Good officiating and an excellent job by the young men playing this ball game from Rock Island and from Moline. Well, the Rocks need to answer. I think at one point they were ahead 39-32, if I remember yes. right. And uh, since that time, the Moline Maroons have done some nice things. But the thing to keep in mind is Rock Island has not applied, really, that full pressure that they had early, like late, late, mid to late second quarter. And we haven't seen that all over the course. And, and the Maroons really struggled against that. That's and right. As we Coach Dexter see. had pointed out, that was going to be one of the things. Here's the Maroons with some pressure of their own. And McJay That's McAdams, right. Thornton's going to pick up a, a blocking foul. And that'll be his fourth foul. Yeah. That's a big foul there. A big foul. His fourth personal foul. I think that's three team fouls for the Maroons. We might go back and talk a little about that. Uh, I uh, missed Coach one Reed somewhere. Called a, called a timeout and kind of spread the offense out a little bit when they're ahead 39-32, and it hasn't really paid off yet. Boy, Novak was open twice underneath the basket, but he couldn't get him the ball. Slaw. There's a foul. Got a kick. Nope. Got a foul on the floor. Well, who's it going to be on? Let's see who. Two, four. Oh, that's it. Wow. That's a big foul. He's out. Yep. McAdam Thornton fouls out. Boy, he was being aggressive, and it was, he, I mean, it was a chance for him to have that ball. He almost got the ball. Timeout. Maroons look like it's going to be a 20. 22nd 20 timeout. Time well, we'll see now. How many fouls is that on uh, Moline now in this? That's uh, one, two, three, four. I think that's their fifth team okay. foul now. Okay. Yeah. Still, still out of bounds. I've missed one somewhere, but I, I know they, last time yeah. I put a foul on, I heard them say four team fouls, that, and that was their fifth team foul. Okay. So. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard real early in the year to get the big hype for a game, but I'll tell you what. And the people in our conference who, who talked early about these two teams being the two best teams in, in the Western Big Six, it has come to this ball game. And right now we're at 41-40. The, the visitors on the scoreboard, the Rock Island Rocks, are ahead by one point and have the ball. And have the ball. Inbounds pass. Slaw. Had a notion. Yep. He wanted to shoot that thing, I think. But they're going to bring it back out. Muskie Valley out front along with Pulliam. Maroon extended their defense there a little bit here. Nice look. That's a kick. Ooh. Maybe he got his hand first, though. I, got believe I believe it did. I believe it might have. That's right. What if it hit you on the knee? Is that a, a kick? A, 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 the if knee you use is, your leg at all? It, no, above the knee is, is not a kick. Oh, OK. But he just kind of stuck his leg out there. But I yeah. think you're right. I think it might have hit I his hand. I think it hit his hand first, which takes all that off. Looking for a little backdoor action, Justin Ward. A little over the top, good backside nice defense. Overplay. Nice overplay there. That's a good defense by the Rocks. They forced that issue a little bit. You bet. Terrence Pulliam coming in on that backside, just put enough pressure from behind that that, that lob to the goal. Well, it kind of cut off uh, Hoyt's avenue to the basket. Yep, sure did. And Travis Hoyt still looking for his first hoop. Oh, my. We got to find the open man, and they've been there, but, but boy, Moline reacts back so fast. Pulliam, he's fouled. Yeah. That's going to be Justin Ward on the foul. You know, you watch good teams play, and these teams are obviously good teams. You're going to get the open person, the open man, but he's 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 open so such a short period of time. I mean, yeah. twice now Novak under the basket has been wide open, but by the time the Rocks look to get it there, there's there's somebody covering that thing up. Beautiful job by Moline defensively. They've held the Rocks to 41 points, but they still trail by one here. Ah, uh, both teams very well coached. No question about that. And you wouldn't expect any less no, here in the Western Big Six. Not at all. This is the kind of game I thought it was going to be coming in. Well, well defense, well scouted, well played. Slaw, big shot here. Wasn't going. 
Rebound. Oh, great move inside. And a great block. Oh. Justin Ward comes out of nowhere and <laughs> takes a oh, sheer basket away God. from Rock Island. Pulliam is going to just lay that ball right back in. Remember and all of a sudden the ball's 12 rows deep in the in the Rock Island. Remember section. that one at 41 to 40. Woo. Just under two minutes, Justin Ward with a big block. Novak gets the ball. But can't get it anywhere near where he wants to shoot it. Small well, that time didn't slip or didn't fall, but he traveled. And the Moline Maroons have an opportunity. If he'd have passed it, he'd have been okay, but he picked it up, and that was one too many steps. That's right. Well, here we go now. Here comes the pressure now. Hoyt comes and gets the ball back to Hickey. Hickey's on the dribble. Over to Manning. He brings it across the timeline. Working against Banks. There's that back door. Scannell oh, with the left go. hand. Up, bounces off the rim, wouldn't go. 133 to go. Mark that one now. You bet. Oh, boy. Justin Ward steps underneath. Whew. He's going to pick up the foul. <laughs> Pulliam is going to go to the line. The last series of plays, Coach, the missed layup and the blocking foul. And Coach Dexter went from jacket on to jacket oh, off yeah. in a real big hurry. And I don't know which assistant's assigned to catching that coat, but I guarantee you, <laughs> one of them has that job. Could Somebody. be the one down there with the coat over his head. <laughs> That was always my job when I was assistant basketball. Catch the coat. Coach, Coach, Coach Dexter signaling for a timeout. They're yep. going to take. They're going to take a full one here. I'm sure. He wants to talk to the ref a little bit. Well, with a full timeout here, why don't we take a little break? 129 remaining here in the contest. Rockets with a one-point lead, 41-40, and we'll be right back. At the free throw line for Rock Island, Terrence Pulliam. He's going to shoot two. On its way, left-handed shot up and good. 42-40, Rock Island. Terrence Pulliam after that tough dribble drive. The 6-2 senior averages six points a game. Makes the first critical free throw. This is another big one on its way short, but rolls in. And the Rocks go full court pressure. 43-40, 1.30 to go. Hickey, oh, look out. dangerous pass. Out of bounds. Maroons are, won't be able to run the baseline now. 127, Rocks by three. Hickey inbounds, right back to Hickey. He's dribbling, Good looking to break the press. Defensive job. Slaw to the ball. Banks needs to step up now. Bounce past the Banks. Woo! Most oh, Valley with the ball. Got the his, hey, here's his leg. He hurt his leg out there, Coach. I don't know what happened to him. He turned his ankle. He's holding his shin. He his shin, Coach. He holds his Still down on the ball. Well, we're back, the Rocks with the ball. Muskie Valley, he got dinged pretty good. He's down there, the trainer's working on him a little bit. Walker has replaced him. Timeout by Rock Island, a quick timeout. Guys couldn't get away, okay? Well, we're back. This is AT&T, it's a ca cable service. I have a little trouble saying that, Smitty, but I'll get better at it along the way. And we know it's a Family Times production darn Jim tootin'. Sanders with Jim Smith, and we're just excited to be back with you. The inaugural broadcast of the 1990 season, 99 season, flashbacks, uh, would be to uh, have the Rock Island Rocks and the Moline Maroons, a battle of the unbeatens, 104 to go, 43-40. Rock Island as they get the ball in bounds. Lorenzo Walker with the ball, across the 10 second line. Double team pressure now by Moline. Yeah, Maroons turned up the defensive pressure. We got a little reach in foul or a, or a little hooking. Maybe it looked like Manning possibly gonna pick up that foul. Yeah, Joe Manning's gonna pick it up. That's his second. Yep. Bonus free throw here now. Donald Slaw is at the free throw line. At the blank, Rock Island, Donald Slaw shooting one and a bonus. Shot, going into this ball game tonight, he's been made nine out of 11 free throws. So one of the better free throw shooters for the Rocks, averaging 10 points a ball game. And it's good. It's huge, that first one. Huge free throw there. Well, I'll tell you, we talked about the free throws becoming big, but uh, well, they are. They didn't make them early, but I'll tell you when they needed to, the Rocks have put that ball in the basket. 52 seconds to go, and, and Slaw makes them both. Full court pressure by Moline. He's calling a timeout. Sorry, he's trying he to was get looking. 
Couldn't find either official, but they knew what he meant. So we got a timeout for Moline. It'll be a full timeout. We're going to take a short break here. We'll be back in just a minute. 45 40. Rock Island with 51 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Well, let's see who's got it. Rocks? No, Maroons. Well, welcome back. Here we are to the final 51 seconds. Moline will inbound the ball, trailing by five. Rocks turning up the defensive pressure. Making some free throws. Pulling away. Moline needs to answer this trip down. Dangerous pass. Hickey for three. Little short. Off the rim wouldn't go. Got a reaching foul. Pulliam gets the rebound. He'll go to the line. Nice job out there, I tell you, by Rock Island. Even in a situation where you don't really want to foul, they put great pressure. They caused Moline to use almost all of their 10 seconds just to go out and get the ball across the 10 second right. line. We got 50 seconds to go in the game. Uh, you don't, you don't you want to do that. You can help it. Pulliam's going to shoot one and one, 6'2 senior. He averages six points a ball game, coach. You got four tonight. Yep, he's going to average six again, maybe, huh? Ooh, roll got the roll. Nice touch. Six point always... lead. Here comes Mike Bosteran for the Maroons. Travis Hoyt's going to sit down. Hoyt picked up that foul, and that's his fourth. Although at this stage of the game, I'm sure they're looking for a little more quickness in the lineup. Yep, yep. The Maroons, that is. Nice job, though. Nice job. Well played game by both teams here at the very end. The Rocks have, have done a little better job defensively and made some free throws. Ward rebound ahead to Hickey quickly. Scannell for three from the corner. Got to have it. Big Not hoop. Yet. Big hoop, Ryan Scannell, second three of the quarter, third three of the game. He pulls the Maroons to within three, Woo. 31 seconds. Well, they did a beautiful job, too, and that was looked like pretty much a set play. They had, you know, down by six. You need a couple threes, so bang, they went right after it. Well, we've always done predictions on our ball games here, Coach, and we got uh, Galesburg playing at UT tonight. What do you think there? Well, I've seen the Panthers play once and haven't seen the Galesburg play. They have similar records, although I know Galesburg's played some pretty highly ranked teams and, and been competitive and hasn't won the games. And uh, the Panthers took it off to a hot start and have struggled lately, lost the Rocks last, we uh, last week. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's going to be a close ball game, but uh, I think maybe Galesburg pulls that one out. Okay. I think I'll just go with the Panthers tonight just for fun. And the Alleman Pioneers, they're down at Quincy tonight. Tough place to play down in the Blue Devils home court. You know, they got the, the sixth man down there, the fans and the Blue Devils. You're not talking about the, the transfer student, are you? Sixth the, uh, and seventh man. Exchange. You're not talking about the foreign exchange student. You know, he hadn't played too much from I what know I hear. It. I know it, but he's still there. Uh, yeah. You're going to pick Quincy, I take it? I'll take Quincy. Uh, I'll take Quincy, too. We'll see how we are. We'll, we'll keep track. Okay. okay. We're back. Of course, you know, next, we won't remember this next week. Well, no, we'll forget it. You fans keep reminding us how bad we really are on this. The Rocks inbounds with 28 seconds to go. Walker with the ball to pull him to Novak. And we had a quick foul, and Novak's going to go to the free throw line. Going to go on Hickey, is it? Coach Reed said it was. Yes. Yep. Coach Reed called that foul from the sideline. <laughs> Pointed it right at Chris Hickey. That's his first foul of the night. Chris Hickey's played the entire game. That's his first foul. Wow. It was a kind of one of those intentional ones. Not a real nice job. I mean, he so many, does so many good things, you know. Novak with 11 points on the night, averaging almost 14 a game. That one rolled in. Again, another huge free throw. When the Rocks have needed a, a huge free throw, they've got it. They really have. Well, that makes it for sure a two-possession game right. now with a four-point lead. 24 seconds to well, go. Well, no, not necessarily. Yeah, you can shoot a three, a three and get a foul, but that happens. Coach Reed is going to really oh. get excited. <laughs> I'm glad I'm up here. <laughs> Quick pressure by the Rocks again. They don't quit. They get it into Hickey. He takes it quickly. Kicks it off to Scannell, has an idea, pulls it down, back to Hickey, long three, off the iron, wouldn't go, Maroon's chasing. It's gonna go off uh, Slaw. Maroon's will inbound it from yep. right in front of their own bench. With Go off uh, Slaw. Maroons will inbound it from yep. right in front of their own bench with just under 15 seconds, trailing by five. 
They need a quick hoop, a timeout, a steal in the hoop. There you go. It could still happen. It could still happen. Inbounds path. Scannell pump fires three off the iron, won't go. <laughs> Offensive glass, no. Walker ends up, with, Coach, I don't know what happened there, but Walker's ready to leap. Two Maroons surround him. He can't get off the ground. I don't know. Well, I think somebody was standing <laughs> on his foot. <laughs> he, it, he, his head moved and he looked like he wanted to go up, but he couldn't go up. But he's gonna go to the free throw line for the Rocks. A battle of the unbeatens tonight, Coach, and I tell you, those yeah, four or 5,000 people that showed up here to watch this ball game, uh, we're in for a real treat. It'll happen, could well happen again at the finals of the Pekin Tournament. Could happen again in February at the Rock Garden. It could happen in Galesburg in the finals of the sectional basketball tournament as Walker makes this free throw. Yeah, now they're free throw and they're extending their lead. It's up to six. Seven seconds remain. Fans out there want to start making plans. February 11th at the Rock Garden, the rematch, Western Big Six, Rock Island and Moline. Travis Ward, or Justin Ward, quickly for a three. Count it! That's and the time game, expires. Man, what a ball game. Hits that three-pointer at the end. Time runs out. The Rocks celebrate. Both teams shake hands. Coaches shake hands. What an outstanding game. Well coached. Uh, coach, I think of all things, the coaching and the way the kids reacted to the coaching was very, very impressive tonight. Yes, it was. Well, you know, we, we commented several times during the game how well coached these teams are, and we wouldn't expect any less here in the Western Big Six. The, you know, the finest basketball conference in the state yep. from top to bottom, probably year in and year out. Yep. And the kids respond to the coaching. Rocks uh, turn up that defensive pressure. Yep. Uh, Maroons went to sleep a little bit, make a nice comeback. Yep. Rocks pull away at the end with some free throws and some, some timely free throw shooting and good pressure defense. Uh, Not to take anything away from the Maroons. Nope. I think some keys to the game in, in, in my second quarter, when the Rocks went with Ray Muscovalli and Mike Brazovich, the two sophomores, and turned up that pressure, they, they turned uh, a, a nice lead by Moline into a nice lead by Rock Island right. with their mere presence. We don't see Brazovich uh, the rest of the ball game, but we see Muscovalli, and every time he went in, the defensive pressure went sky high, steals, Moline had all kinds of trouble finding shots. So I think if there's a, maybe a player of the game, even though he certainly wasn't the leading scorer, I'm going to I'm going to vote for 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 that young man for his mere presence on the court. Who? This Muscovelli. Disrupting. Disrupting. And, and let's hope offense. he's OK because they took it. He was yeah. he went down late yeah. there in the game. He's but he's down here kind of limping a little bit. And uh, TV guys are going to talk to him a little bit. But he is hobbled. He got some ice on that thing. You know, you're right. I hope he's fine. Well, we're trying to put together some totals here to see if we can get you some scoring totals. And there's some telling things within this scoring. Uh, some of the leading scorers, Travis Hoyt, for example, didn't score a point tonight for the Maroons, and he, wow. that's 12 point that's right. three points that uh, yep. you take out of that, that lineup. Exactly right. Ryan Scannell picked it up a little bit. He, he was a few points over his average. He had 13, and he's been averaging about seven and a half. So some guys have picked up the slack. I thought Joe Manning played a good game. I did too, Coach. Uh, top to bottom, good on the boards, passed the ball well, handled the ball well. So our leading scorers for the Maroons, Ryan Scannell and uh, Joe Manning, 13 apiece. And for the uh, Rocks, it was uh, Brad Novak in the first half, nine points, and he finished with 12. And then Donald Schlaw hit a couple big threes in the second half, two for two from the free throw line, yep. finishes with 12 points. So those young men lead the way, but uh, it was a solid team effort by you the Rocks. Bet. Everybody contributed. I thought Lorenzo Walker came in and gave him some, some really good stuff. So. Well, we're done here. Wharton Fieldhouse, the first big showdown of the year, the Moline Maroons and the Rock Island Rocks. This one goes to the visiting Rocks, 49-46. Well, we're done here, folks. This is an AT&T Cable Services. You've been listening to a Family Ties production, and we've really, really enjoyed ourselves here. Uh, we're going to be at the shootout, have some fun the next couple days. We'll be watching for the broadcast times for those. This is Jim Sanders with Jim Smith. Coach, it's been a pleasure to be back on the air again. Oh, it's fun. It's a good oh, time. Like riding time. a bike, isn't it? Oh, well, we hope it was. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll know Tuesday night or Wednesday when we watch it on TV. I never we? watch. <laughs> I watch it every single time. <laughs> okay, folks, we'll see you next time around. We're going to the shootout tomorrow. Have fun. God bless, and we'll see you next time.